Thank you so much for having me. So my name is Anne Rombi. Let's see if this works. It does. My name is Anne Rombi, and I am the CEO and the founder of this Swedish startup company called Ad Truly. And at Ad Truly, what we do is just like Emily said, we have developed a digital platform that helps companies to collaborate with grassroots NGOs in Sweden and all over the world. Uh, to be, and they be, we help them to build strong, profitable, and efficient collaborations. If you want to put it the other way around, we help awesome NGOs across the world to find financing here in Sweden. And the reason why we do this, I think I need to go back a little bit to my background. I have a very mixed background. My mom is from Ukraine. My dad is from Uganda. I grew up here in Sweden. And having two parents who are really politically interested and from two different parts of the world meant that we would discuss international development, what the world looks like all the time at my home. So I would say that everything that has to do with international relations, everything that has to do with development issues is in some way in my DNA. And if we fast forward, forward uh, to a couple of years ago, I got the opportunity to work for the UN, just like Emily said. And uh, I had the mission to support 18 local NGOs all across the world, working with intercultural dialogue. And what I saw was some really, really amazing initiatives that were really, really efficient, they were super responsive, and had a really great impact on the local communities. I also saw that they were really, really struggling to get financing. This is, was a major issue for them. So I started to think more and more, what can I do to contribute to help these initiatives around the world to get financing, to get capital. I started to think so much of it that I, upon getting back to Stockholm, I worked as a management consultant, and then I decided to quit my job and really devote my time to figure this out. I started to look into what does charity look here? Uh, what does the charity look like here in Sweden? What does the donors will look like? What does companies' charity work like, uh, look like? And I made a lot of interesting findings, but two of them actually stood out and gave me the business case I needed. The first one was millennials, and the second one was the Swedish fear of doing wrong. When it comes to millennials, so just to give you the context, here in Sweden, for quite some time, the average donor has been a female uh, living in Stockholm, having quite a well-paid job. So it has been so for quite some time. But this is changing as more and more millennials are starting uh, to make up a bigger percentage of the work workforce. And what does this actually mean for philanthropy? Well, there is sort of a misunderstanding that millennials are all about me, me, me. It might be true in some cases, but not when it comes to charity, not when it comes to philanthropy. The millennials are very purpose-driven, they're values-driven. Forbes goes as far as calling them the impact generation. They want to work for workplaces that are purpose-driven, that have a very clear and genuine raison d'etre. When it comes to charity, they want to support causes that matter to them. It's true that they don't, don't do donate as much money as the parents, for instance, but they do donate. They donate smaller amounts, they donate on the go, and they donate to things that really, really touch them and they uh, get engaged. So we really need to recognize the, the opportunities we have here, and we really need to target the, um, the, the, uh, everything that drives this generation. Okay, and the other important finding I did was the fear of doing wrong, of the Swedish companies at least. Because in contrary to American companies, Swedish companies are really careful when it comes to communicating their social responsibility. They're really careful uh, in communicating their collaborations with NGOs. Why? I'm not quite sure. It might be of the fear of doing wrong, it might be because of lack of knowledge, or it might be of uh, lack of knowledge knowing that millennials are really, really... Um, uh, they need to know these facts, but uh, companies are not aware of this. But this means that this unwill of communicating their collaborations, the social responsibility, it means that companies are missing incredible opportunities of attracting both clients and talents and opportunities worth millions of dollars. And this finding really made my 
business case, and I decided to start Ad Truly. So today. I am the CEO of Ad Truly, where we help companies to build collaborations with NGOs and to communicate it in a trustworthy way. And me and my development team, we have these four guiding facts that we are guided by all the time, at all times, when we are developing the different features of our digital platform. So the future is digital, we all know that. When it comes to millennials, 94% of them own a smartphone, they get majority of the news through social media. They look up new workplaces through social media. They raise the voices in matters that matter to them uh, through social media. So this is a very tech-savvy generation. Storytelling is king. The attention span of a mille millennial is about eight seconds. So you really need to be right on point with wh whatever you want to say. Don't include too much statistic, too much facts. Rather tell a story that engages. Rather tell a story that is personalized to engage uh, this generation. Make it simple, make it clear. If storytelling is king, then transparency is queen. This generation, they need to know what does the contribution that I do, what does it really contribute to? What impact does it have? The workplace that I'm working at, if it has some sort of CSR strategy, social responsibility strategy, what does it really mean in real life? So honesty, transparency is super important. And lastly, what guides us is there is more than money. This generation, for them, engagement is as equally important. It's not only about the money. They will engage in matters that really, really affect them. They will engage their time, they will volunteer for volunteer projects, pro bono projects, fundraising campaigns. Money is not the only thing that matters for them. So how does this translate to what we do today? Well, everything we do is digital. First of all, uh, the first step in uh, our business model is that we match companies with relevant NGOs to build the trustworthiness, to build the transparency, to build everything that is coming uh, further down. So we have a matching process with, with what that matches companies with relevant NGOs. Then the companies get access to communication kits, and these are videos, images, texts, everything that companies need to communicate the collaborations in a trustworthy way in all the channels, on social media, on websites, uh, on newsletters, and so on. So they get uh, communication kits that are easy to communicate. When it comes to transparency, to fulfill, fulfill that goal, we ask all NGOs to fill out yearly and quarterly reports through our platform. And there we also measure, measure the long-term and short-term uh, impacts and effects. And we also ask our NGOs to post vlogs, blogs, so that the companies and their co-workers can follow the their day-to-day -day, uh, work of the NGOs. And when it comes to engagement tools, we have developed a bunch of engagement tools that companies can use to activate, to engage their co-workers. Uh, these are tools that, are, that can be used to uh, activate employees in uh, voluntary projects, in pro bono projects, f gamified fundraising campaigns, and other uh, tools that are digital, they're easy to share through social media, and they're easy to involve not only the co-workers, but also their friends and their families, and to really share the cause of um, a specific collaboration. So we have been doing this for a couple of years now. We have been working with companies, uh, helping them to strengthen their brands, to attract millennials. We have helped NGOs. We have at least one of the NGOs here, Drömmen om det goda. Um, and we are not the only actor here in Sweden trying to change the status quo of charity. We have, for instance, uh, Target Aid, which is a digital platform that has been developed that helps private donors to donate money in a simple digital way. And I think that more actors such as us are needed, such as Microsoft, are needed, because even though more and more NGOs are starting to realize that they need to adapt to this new digital era, the fact is that when it comes to NGOs, they can put down around 1% on the average on uh, research and development on to try to find uh, new ways of uh, fundraising money, compared to companies that can put down as much as 25% of the revenue on R&D. So NGOs still have a long way to go to figure this out, and they 
most of the time they don't have the financing. So I really think that actors such as us and others uh, are needed. And we do what we can to nudge NGOs to uh, try to adapt to this digital era a bit faster. So thank you so much for listening. If you have any questions or thoughts, I will be just outside in the break. So come and see me. Thank you.